Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Richard, and I'm a member of the, the Archive Manager Support Team. And uh, basically, today we're going to be going over the process of uh, running an upgrade for Archive Manager, uh, specifically in this case, doing an upgrade from uh, Archive Manager 7.4 to our latest version now of Archive Manager version 8. And I'm going to jump right into that here to make sure we have plenty of time to, to cover everything that I want to discuss today. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to show you the uh, prerequisite document that we actually have here regarding uh, the ability to be able to, to, uh, to upgrade the software. And uh, prerequisites really haven't changed much from uh, 7.4 and, and older versions going to, to version 8. Uh, minimum operating system is uh, Windows Server 2008 R2. We also need to have the .NET Framework 3.5 as well as uh, 4.6 installed on the server, along with roles for uh, IIS. Um, as well as uh, Outlook 2010 or higher, and uh, which version of Outlook depends on the version of Exchange you're using in the environment. Uh, the general um, safety uh, Outlook version that, that we really just recommend is uh, Outlook 2013 32-bit, as this is cat compatible with any version of Exchange or Office 365. So if you aren't sure which version of Outlook is best to be running, uh, Outlook 2013 32-bit is the easiest choice. Um, Archive Manager version 8 is the first version of Archive Manager to have dropped support for Exchange Server 2007. Uh, this is a ma major thing to, to make note of as uh, Exchange 2007 has gone end of life with Microsoft as well as Outlook 2007. And so just uh, if you are not, if you are still running Exchange 2007, we do recommend holding off on the upgrade to version 8 for now. Uh, Archive Manager 7.4 is still supported and does still have support for uh, Exchange 2007. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be jumping right into the actual upgrade process here so I can demonstrate to you what the upgrade installer does and then show you uh, that how to go through and confirm that the upgrade was in fact successful. So just taking a look at my uh, test environment here, uh, this is the installation package installer actually just uh, on the screen at the moment. Uh, we're on the welcome screen right now and if we go over to the planning tab, you'll see that we actually have the full listing of the hardware software requirements as well as release notes and a quick link to our homepage built right into the install package. Let's get over to the installation tab and accept the license agreement. You're going to notice here that I am upgrading from Archive Manager 7.4 to version 8 and we'll see that in all the components. There's really nothing to go through and select and worry about on this screen. It will automatically go through and detect all components installed on the server and select them to be upgraded as part of the installer. Now, one major note while this is going through and doing a check on the system here is going to Archive Manager version 8 is only supported from Archive Manager 7.4. It is critical that when going through and doing an upgrade of Archive Manager that you do follow the upgrade path to each version. And the main reason for that is because of the scripts that have to run on the SQL databases. The, as the, the software has changed and evolved, there are some changes to the SQL database structure. And so if we were to go, for example, from Archive Manager 7.3, to version 8 here. The, the scripts for version 8 are actually going to run assuming that the scripts for 7.4 had already been run. And so by skipping a version it can cause some problems in the environment because it's not going to know to, to actually look for the information in the correct locations in the SQL table. So it is very, very important to go through and actually follow the upgrade and for no reason at all uh, and in no situation skip any of the upgrade steps for Archive Manager. So if, for example, you're running Archive Manager version 7 and looking to upgrade, you want to go from version 7 to 7.2 to 7.3 to 7.4 and then to version 8. Uh, of course, we have very few ver uh, version 7 and older versions of Archive Manager that are still out there. These are uh, versions of the software that are a number of years old now. A uh, majority of our customers are now running uh, newer versions of the software. And currently, Archive Manager 8 and 7.4 are supported versions of the software. So our prerequisite check and everything has gone through and passed on my test environment here. If you are missing any of the Windows features and roles or for missing C++ or anything else in your environment, this will actually prompt you to go through and install them. Now when we get to this screen here, this is a very important screen and one of the most common areas that our customers actually make a mistake on is they might be logged in with a domain admin account or their own administrator account and think that this is just asking for just some kind of credentials to run the install when this is in fact actually asking for the super user account. If you're not sure what your super user account is, you can simply check the services 
on the, the server and see what all the Metalogix Archive Manager services are running under. That is your super user account and that is what that, that screen is actually asking for. We get over to this page here. It's going through, this is the listing of all of our SQL database configurations. And you can see that we actually can't even modify any of these properties if we want to, because it reads that all of this is already in place and it's reading the current configuration. So again, we just click next on this. And the overall installer, as you can see, for the most part, really is next, next, next to a wizard. Uh, the only time that it's really going to be asking you for information is when it comes to that uh, the super user credentials. Now, in my environment here, this is an upgrade for both the Archive Manager Exchange Edition and Files Edition. I have both installed on this server here because I wanted to demonstrate what the process looks like for both. Uh, but as you can see here, we're really just going next, next, next through each one of these pages without making any changes to any of this because it is simply going through and reading the current configuration and then doing an in-place upgrade of all of these components. Now, once the installer gets underway here, the very first component that it's going to go through and upgrade is the HSM. And if you do have multiple archive servers in your environment, as we do have a, a number of customers with very large deployments of the servers, uh, of, of the software on multiple servers, uh, if you have a separate HSM server from your archive or retrieve servers, and you have some of the roles that are uh, segmented between multiple servers, we do recommend going through and upgrading the HSM server first. Uh, this is a warning message that will come up during the HSM, and this is just talking about some very, very old features of the HSM that are no longer supported. Uh, that The iTernity feature that that is talking about is actually something from uh, previous to Archive Manager 5. So uh, it's a very, very old component that we discontinued some time ago, but our installer still uh, comes up and, and warns you about that just in case an environment were to be impacted by that. But uh, really, once the installation process is underway here, in most environments, the rest of the install and uh, software, as well as database upgrades, will run without any other interaction. Uh, it is a, a scripted installer that's going to go through and upgrade all the different components. And so what the installer just did now is it went through and upgraded the HSM software components on this server. And then in just a moment, it's going to go through and run the set of scripts that run against the HSM SQL database. Now, when the upgrade for Archive Manager goes through and runs, there is actually four different SQL databases in most environments that we use. Uh, the first is the HSM SQL database, which is the one that's about to have the, the scripts run on it in just a moment. Your HSM is, of course, what is actually used for storing all of your archive data. And that SQL database, is, you can kind of think of it as like an index of all the data that is actually stored in your archive. And so uh, here's the script run for this here. Now there's a total of four databases, as I said before, that, uh, that the software uses. And so there's actually four different sets of SQL scripts that we'll be going through and running as part of this uh, in, uh, install. Of course, in my case here, I actually have five SQL databases that are going to get upgraded because I'm running both the Exchange Edition and Files Edition, and both the Exchange and Files have their own separate SQL database. So our install for upgrading the Files Edition components on this server is running now. And one of the common notes about this here is because of how it integrates with the Windows shell in uh, Windows Server just by the, the nature of the software, is it's not unusual for it to encounter one or more locked DLL files during this install process here. And if it does encounter something like that, effectively what it will do is it will create a task to go through and finish its operations on those locked files once the server is restarted. And so in just a moment here, this installer is likely going to go through and prompt me to, and basically give me a reminder about restarting the server. But that, remind, that, that message that's going to come up about restarting is going to be by default set to no restart later. And that should be coming up in, in just a moment here. Uh, and this is one of the, um, the, the new changes that have actually happened with the new 8.0 Archive Manager installer compared to previous versions. Uh, that the 
installer for Archive Manager version 8 is actually advanced significantly compared to previous versions of the software in that it has the ability to handle the installation of a number of prerequisites that previously, if you were missing, were just simply going to be missing on the server and could cause some issues with the software if they were not installed ahead of time. Uh, the 8 installer now does a full check both for C++, .NET Framework, and IIS, and if any of those features are missing, it will actually prompt you to go through and install those features. Now, as far as the uh, the restart message that's likely going to come up in just a moment here, uh, this is also the first version of the installer where the default answer to restarting the server is set to no rather than yes. And uh, the main reason for that being is it being set to yes by default, a lot of our customers would go through if we were prompted for our restart, they would immediately just restart the server then, not knowing that you actually need to go through and run the installation package again after that restart for it to go through and finish all of the remaining steps. So uh, here's our, our SQL script for the, the files edition uh, running now. And while, while this is running here, one major note to, to notice about uh, the uh, SQL database scripts, this is a simple test environment that I have running locally as, as part of my own system here. Not the fastest test environment or uh, you know, the, the, a real accurate case as far as performance goes, but how long these SQL databases take to run is completely dependent on your environment. The larger the SQL database, the longer the script is going to take to run because there's simply more data that it needs to go through and uh, modify and, and take and changes that it needs to actually make in the database itself. Uh, we are also very, very uh, limited by the performance of SQL for as long as this upgrade takes to go through and run. Um, and so if your SQL server is low on CPU or memory resources, your upgrade is just going to take a little bit longer to run because we're just going to be running into a bottleneck with that, the SQL scripts. Now it appears in my environment here that we actually didn't get run into any locked files through any of the install steps here. And, and that is the most common case, but uh, again, if you do end up getting anything about the installer that, that comes up and is talking about a locked file and prompts for a restart, uh, we recommend just going with the, the default option as it's set now of no restart later. And then once the entire process of the upgrade is complete, restarting the archive server then, which even though if yeah, this, this whole package is going to go through and complete the upgrade and afterwards, if it hasn't run into any locked files, it actually won't tell you anything about restarting the server or recommending that. But as just a general best practice, uh, once the complete upgrade is done, uh, we always think it's a good idea to go through and just restart the archive server. That way all services in the operating system can get a clean start running the new version of the software. So right now it's going to and upgrading the Exchange Edition software components on the server here. And once this is done, it's going to go through and run the scripts on the Exchange uh, SQL database. Uh, and the scripts for the Exchange SQL database are typically the longest to actually run in an environment. And to give kind of a baseline on, on some of that, and once again, this is very, very dependent on the environment as far as how long an upgrade takes to run. You know, it, we, we get a lot of customers that ask us for a timeline of how long an, an upgrade takes to run, and it's almost like asking how long Windows updates are going to take to install. It, it's very, very subject to an environment's performance of the local server, and we have so many different factors here, such as SQL performance, the, the performance of the archive server, that it's really hard to go through and create a, a really good estimate for it. So we, we have some general guidelines that, uh, you know, if we had to say a, a timeline in general for most environments, we do recommend at least a two-hour downtime to allow plenty of time for the upgrade to go through and run. Uh, if you have SQL databases that are less than 20 gigabytes in size total, most of those environments actually can upgrade in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, if you have SQL databases in excess of 100 gigabytes, that could actually take longer than the two hours to go through and run. And for this reason, especially environments that are running older versions of Archive Manager, uh, we're talking about version 7.3 and below, uh, we recommend with, during, through that install process to establish kind of a baseline of how long each one of those upgrades takes and using that baseline as an estimation for how long your future upgrades are going to take.
Now, while this is not a perfect system and it's not going to truly accurately predict things, it's almost like trying to predict the weather, it can at least give you a pretty accurate picture and allow you to add some padding into the, the, the downtime, especially for, for organizations that have uh, archiving as part of a critical business operation and you know they, they need to go through and make sure that uh, downtime is accounted for. Uh, having a baseline of how long an upgrade takes to run and then adding some padding on that will just make sure there's no unexpected situations in the environment environment as far as uh, when users are able to access archived data. Because of course, while the upgrade is running and until it's complete, accessing of archived messages from Exchange is not going to work, and accessing of archived files on a file server with the, uh, the Files Edition product is not going to work until the upgrade process is complete. So only a couple of more steps that are coming up here. And while the, the last steps for the, the search and archive web are running, I'm just going to talk about a couple of these warnings that we see in the background that are expected. In my particular case, I'm actually logged in to my archive server as my super user account, which in most environments is not a domain admin for the environment. So it's not unusual to see some warnings on some of the components here, specifically for configuration of super user rights. Since this account is not a domain admin account, it actually does not have access to Active Directory to check to see if it's part of the proper groups in Active Directory. And this is something that can be simply ignored because these are things that are actually only needed during the initial install of Archive Manager. So even if we do have some warnings uh, through any of this process for an upgrade regarding the, the super user rights um, or the managing of organizational forms library, Active Directory permissions, container permissions, uh, these are things that are really not, not to, uh, to cause any kind of concern because these are things that are done with the initial install of Archive Manager and upgrades do not require any changes to any of this. Really, when we're going through and running an upgrade, we're not modifying anything in the environment whatsoever. We're not making any changes to anything in Exchange. We're not making any changes to anything in Active Directory. The two places that upgrade impacts is the software installed on the archive server itself, as well as the databases running in SQL, which in my particular case here, I'm running just a local SQL instance on, this, uh, on my test environment server. Even if your uh, databases are running on a SQL server that is actually a separate server in the environment, this whole process is still completely automated and those scripts will actually just get told to run over on that SQL server. So one of the common questions we get about upgrades is, I know it, so this is what we do to, to run the upgrade on the archive server, what do we do for SQL? And the answer to that is nothing. There's nothing that you actually have to specifically do on the SQL server or any other server in the environment to account for an upgrade of Archive Manager. Our scripted installer goes through and handles 100% of the process. Now, if you do encounter any kind of errors or have any problems with the upgrade, which is a very, very small set of cases, uh, then uh, we definitely just recommend opening a support case with us so that we can take a look at the environment and troubleshoot as needed. So my upgrade process is actually finished here. And how we know that it is finished is because it has opened the Archive Manager configuration utility. And the reason that it does this is to give you an opportunity to verify that components have all upgraded successfully. So as we discussed earlier, there's four SQL databases, or in my case here, since I have Exchange and Files Edition components installed, I have five. And so what we can do is we can look through these different tabs and look at the database and scripts version to make sure that this shows your database is up to date. And we can see that on my auditing features, that is up to date. For the HSM, it shows that it is up to date. Files is up to date. Users is up to date. And finally, Exchange is up to date. Archive Web. And the search components do not have dedicated SQL databases, so there's nothing to go through and actually check on that. So again, you know that the install and upgrade has actually finished by the Archive Manager configuration utility opening. And upon closing the utility, this is when the install package will actually allow us to hit the finish button. 
Now, before I do, I want to point out the other warning that came up here. And this is a warning that will happen in any environment, with the exception of those running strictly Office 365, is this is just a reminder about upgrading the Exchange 64-bit extensions on your Exchange server to match the version of Archive Manager that you've upgraded to. And these are the features that allow for the opening of archive messages in OWA. So this is basically just a reminder that if you upgrade this, the Archive Manager server, you need to go through and upgrade the components on the Exchange server if you are using those components. And with that, our upgrade process is complete. Like I said, I think it's always a good idea to go through and restart the Archive server after the upgrade is actually finished. And then after that restart, of course, performing testing to ensure that opening of archive messages and, uh, and all the functions of the software are working properly. And of course, should you have any kind of issues, then we recommend going through and opening a case for support. So that is the upgrade process for Archive Manager and how to uh, verify that the, uh, the databases and the software were all upgraded. And real quick, I just want to touch on one of the most important features that we've added with Archive Manager version 8 now, and that is the support for using EWS, Exchange Web Services, for archiving. Uh, this is one of the biggest changes to the, the product as now we no longer have to just use Mappy and Outlook uh, to, to go through and actually archive messages. We have the ability to just contact Exchange directly using EWS. And version 8 of Archive Manager is the first official version of the software capable of that. And so that, um, you know, especially in environments that have had a number of problems with Mappy in the past, uh, that, that is a very good reason to go through and actually upgrade to, ver to version 8 of Archive Manager because any issues with Mappy profiles can be completely just factored out now that we can actually use uh, EWS. So that is the uh, presentation here, and I will go ahead and open the floor for uh, any questions that anyone has uh, regarding any of the upgrade process. Uh, first question I have here, uh, does it matter what point release of 7.4 is installed before upgrading to release 8? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, we have a number of versions of, uh, of Archive Manager that, you know, there was, when 7.4 came out, there was originally a 7.4.110, and then a 1.1.2, later a 1.1.5. Uh, these are small sub-versions that were mainly just putting out small patches to issues that we found in the software. But as far as the upgrade path goes, it is the major version that you need to make sure is in place before upgrading. And those major versions in recent history are 7.0, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 8.0, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8
uh, next step I have here. Should we upgrade Archive Manager first, then migrate to Exchange 2016, or should we upgrade to 2016 and then upgrade Archive Manager? Uh, there is actually no direct reasons to, to choose either path on this. Um, Archive Manager, we've actually had support for Exchange 2016, starting with Archive Manager version 7.3. So we've supported it for quite some time now, and uh, well, there are uh, older versions of Archive Manager and uh, connections to uh, Exchange 2016, specifically regarding SSL, weren't as stable. Uh, I would say that's probably the, the main reason I'd recommend upgrading Archive Manager first rather than doing the, uh, the Exchange upgrade. That way, when Exchange is upgraded, you already have all the latest stability features in the latest version of the, the software. However, if you do decide to go through for um, any logical reasons in the environment to upgrade Exchange first, again, Archive Manager 7.3 is the first version that had support for Exchange 2016, and it definitely will connect and allow you to import the server. So the, the, my overall recommendation and answer to that question is, is whatever works best for your environment. We have a lot of customers that are going through and they have large exchange environments and so they might actually have a third party go through and migrate uh, to the newer version of exchange. Uh, so that, you know, if you have other factors that are really dictating a timeline of the upgrade of exchange, uh, I would focus on that before worrying about the upgrade of archive manager. But again, this is completely up to you. And of course, anyone out there, if you do have questions about the upgrade process, uh, specifically if you have questions just regarding your specific environment, which we've not covered in this process here today, uh, definitely welcome to open a case with us for support. And we'd be happy to go in, do a health check with you, just to make sure the environment is ready for the upgrade and to make any recommendations. Uh, another question here. Did you say that the HSM server should be upgraded first if it is a separate server from the software server and or SQL server? Uh, that is a yes. Um, and, and this is, again, in the case where customers have the uh, Archive Manager software separated across multiple servers in the environment. You know, so for example, a common deployment in large environments is to have a separate HSM server, a separate archive server, and a separate retrieve server so that it's balancing out the roles of managing the data in the archive, archiving messages, and allowing users to open archive messages across different servers. And so the main reason that when going through an upgrade process, I recommend doing the HSM first is because that is following the path that the actual upgrade installer does. Um, as you saw during the installer, the very first component that gets upgraded is the HSM. And by going through and upgrading the HSM first before your other servers, that allows those other servers, once they are upgraded, to come back online and immediately communicate with the HSM at the correct version. Uh, the, the HSM has a lot of critical information that tells the archive software how to function, and uh, there could be issues with everything from services starting to accessing of archive data if uh, the HSM server hasn't been upgraded yet. So while it's, you know, so long as you're upgrading all the components, which, you know, of course, if you're doing an upgrade to version 8, you need to make sure that version 8 is running on all servers in your environment. Uh, it's not a huge uh, difference of doing the HSM first compared to just doing it in a different order. But if I had to give a recommendation of the order in which to do the upgrade, yes, I do recommend doing the HSM server first. <laughs> 